Got it? All right, good deal. Hey, YouTubers. It's a beautiful day in early February here in North Texas. I mean, it's probably about 60. It's going to be 70 degrees or something like that today. So we're going to take that time to work on the old RV to get it ready for next month. And we're planning a trip that's going to take uh, probably four episodes to cover. And uh, what we're going to talk about today are these cabinets. Now, um, People like to say how much they, they don't like having these cabinets that you have to hold up in order to get things out of. And then people also like to talk about how much they love it when they, when they have the struts on here to keep it open. But I haven't found a video yet that really talks about how to put these struts in. And I was wondering, well, how hard is it going to be? Is it just as easy as it looks like it might be? Are there problems, pitfalls, things that could happen? Well, let me tell you, there are. There are mistakes that you can make in doing that. Because I've already tried to do this once. didn't go real well. We're going to do it again and hopefully be able to uh, use the things that I've learned. And then I will share with you the mistakes that I made. Okay, are you ready? We're going to put some of these in. All right, now the first thing you need while you're working on this is a way to work on it because you can't work on it and hold it up at the same time. So you need to have somebody help you. Would you come over here and share your arm with you? Now, that's that's a you got somebody who'll do it. That is great. But let me tell you something. For the length of time it takes for you to put these in, which isn't long, their arm is going to feel like it's falling off. So I'm going to try a different uh, plan here. We're going to see if this will work. I think a little bit of masking tape would really solve the problem. Let's find out. Now, by a little bit, I mean a lot, actually. Um, I, I actually struggled to, uh, to, to do some things, and I'm telling you, her arm was just getting more and more tired. All right, let go. There you go. How about that? Are you happy about that? Say it. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay. Now there are instructions that come with these things and they are obviously written by people who um, uh, English is not their first language. And and by that I mean they're 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 kind of like IKEA um, illustrations. It'll just have like a picture of the thing and it'll say something like 90 millimeters, 140 millimeters, and that's all you get. Uh, in fact, there should be an example of that beside me right now, okay, the kind of instructions I got on these things. But that's not a problem, really. I mean, um, everybody likes to talk about how the United States doesn't use the metric system. Well, uh, that's really not true. The United States uses the metric system. We're the, one of the only countries, if not the only country, that uses both metric and imperial. Everybody in the United States knows what a meter is and a kilometer is and a millimeter is. Every doctor, scientist, pilot, policeman, uh, fireman, everybody, they, everybody knows the metric system. So that's not, and all of our measuring tapes have you know, metric on one side, inch on the other, so that's really not a problem. No no sense getting upset about that. But you would think that the simple thing to do is just to install everything so it, it, it's wherever, you know, if I put it like this, then it seems to me that that's where it would open it up, you know, that would open it up to. Well, that's exactly right, except there are some tiny things you have to consider. For example, this must be recessed back about a half an inch behind this part here in order for it to have a place to go whenever it, it, it you close it. There are there are two rules when it comes to working on cabinetry. My dad was a cabinet maker and he tried his best to teach me how to do it and I just kind of rebelled and refused my whole life. But there's two things I do remember and that is number one with cabinets before you drive a nail or put in a screw or anything you must pre-drill the hole. If you don't, this stuff is thin and very often made out of particle board or whatever, and it, it and even if it's made out of really good lumber, you'll split it when you put that screw in if you don't pre-drill the hole. The second rule is, no matter what you do, you need to set some kind of depth gauge on your drill so you don't drill too far. If you, if you, okay, uh, pat them down a little bit if you need to. And, uh, and oh, look, the tape uh, came off. Apparently, the tape has me on a timer. I've only got so long to do this. 
Huh. Okay, well, I've got a depth gauge here. Hopefully you can see that. And it's just a piece of tape. It, it's hard to tell when a drill is, um, uh, uh, how far in it is. So now you can get these, these clamp-on depth gauges, and those are great. But a little piece of tape will really help you a lot. I'm hearing the tape do its thing. I'll be right back. All right. I've put a little bit more tape on there, and uh, we're going to drill some holes. Now, where's the... Part of the valve, yes. All right, you have to have the bottom part is kind of a ball joint situation. This is a little ball joint that's going to go right here. Now, notice there's uh, not a lot of meat in here to screw this thing in. I'm only going to be able to use two of the holes. I've thought about gluing a piece of uh, little get a little piece of wood to the back of this so there will be more. Uh, to, to screw to and I probably will go back and do that in a little bit but for now I'm just going to drill some holes I've moved this thing back to where this edge here is flush with the uh, the side there and so it's gonna be just like that and that and uh, hopefully there's gonna be a nut once I pre-drill it it will be strong enough this is one of the pitfalls that I discovered before and I'll tell you what happened but there we go. All right, hopefully. All right, good deal. Okay, I drilled my first hole in there and kind of set it to the rear, I guess you could say, back a little bit and put a screw in it to hold this ball joint in place so then I'd know where to perfectly drill my next hole. And so I'm putting this screw in here. I didn't want to use my big drill, uh, which is also a driver, because it goes too fast even when slowed down and I'm scared of busting it by, having, by doing it either by hand or by this little one here, I can kind of monitor it and make sure I'm not going to blow out the thing. It looks pretty good. I may come back and put a piece on the back side here, but it looks like it's doing really well. Next thing I need to do is simply put this guy. This snaps on. There we go. That snaps on there. Snap this thing on here on the bottom. It goes on. Now, I theoretically, all I should have to do is drill my holes for the top part using my uh, little tape depth gauge there so I don't drill through the uh, the door face and I don't want to do that I got it I seem to have it pretty straight let's see yeah that looks good and it also lines up with the mark I made Notice there is a bracket for the ball joint up there. I intentionally made sure it was on the inside and that is not on this side so it may bump into uh, uh, an, into this beam or structure, whatever you want to call it, piece of wood right there. So I've got it there. And uh, I drill the two holes with it in place. All right, theoretically, we're done. Let's find out. My wife didn't believe me when I said it would only take 10 minutes, did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. How about that? And that's how easy it is. So what problems can you encounter when you're doing this? A couple of things. One, make sure you leave your, um, there's, a, there's that little friction roller kind of catch for locking the doors closed. 
don't think, oh, well, I'll do it right on that side where the holes are already drilled because those holes aren't handy. They're just about in the right place. No, do, don't do that. You're going you're gonna to need that later on. I took it out on this side, and then I realized, wait, I don't want to do that, so I put it over here, and I'm going to have to put that one back on, but that's no big deal. The holes are already drilled. Second thing is make sure you buy the correct piston. If you don't, um, it can cause a problem. When I was ordering the struts on, 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 on Amazon, okay, when I was ordering the struts on Amazon, um, I, I, I was actually kind of thinking of the one over here, pan over there. I was thinking about this one on the other side that's above the uh, dinette. This is actually a much larger cabinet than the one over the sink. I didn't even realize that. This one is 16 inches, whereas the one over the sink is only something like uh, 10 inches or so, 10 or 11 inches. And I bought a strut I thought would work. Well, I got this 10 inch strut, and I'm here to tell you, this doesn't work on this, the seven inch ones, or whatever it is, seven or eight inch ones. Make sure you get the right size for your cabinet. It didn't even cross my mind that these things were two different sizes. I don't know why, it just didn't. So when I installed this one or one of these into that one, it worked great. And when I tried to install one in that one, it just, there's no way to make it fit. Now, I still have one of these larger ones over here and man, it works great. Look at that. But it's kind of a, a, a weird, oh, and it opens and closes real slowly. It's kind of cool. I can, I can do this and it'll open, isn't that neat? All right, and I love it. I love it over here, but one of these is never going to fit on the other side. That's one thing. Make sure, make sure you're ordering the right size for your RV or even your different cabinets in your RV. Um, the other thing is, I didn't pay any attention to the strength of these things. These right here, this one right here, will lift 44 pounds. All right, these are made for like doing the hatchback on your pinto or something you know it's i i can't even collapse this thing and uh, uh and so yeah that turned out to be a problem and first time i pushed this thing down because i had to push so hard it just blew out the wood on the back of this thing so i had to fix that but i love this one over here man it's really cool it it and i'm gonna have to put the little catch back in too but look at this man isn't that neat man it works great but Swing back over this way. Now I've got the smaller ones here, and look at that. That works great too. So make sure you get the right size, and make sure that you get the right strength. And then the third thing is, don't take out the little catch like I did over here, which I'm gonna put back, it won't take any time at all. But man, how easy was that? So it's not difficult. You may have to look at some weird instructions and they'll be in you know millimeters or something like that, but big deal, all right? And so there we go, we have that. Isn't that cool? Ah, good way to spend a pretty day in February, huh?